All right, guys, I almost squandered a really good opportunity here. This is a Franklin Mint Hudson that kind of hops up and down the track as you go. Yeah, it's a fully functional HO engine, but there is a lot of issues with this thing. I mean, not that it's been dropped or anything. These are manufacturing issues. If you look at these drivers here, I mean, that is a lot of play. You should get a little play, but that is a lot of play. And another thing was this tender would not couple. I mean, the height of the knuckle coupler, it was too high. So if you put a KD coupler on here, KD number five is what I got here. It was way too high. Uh, standard HO train would roll right underneath that coupler and uh, it would be it was it was for show so yeah that i didn't get but i came up with a solution for that let me bring you down here for a minute as you can see here that's pretty good see that and i'll show you what i did because there may be a few of you out here out out there in youtube world looking for a solution and uh, it was actually quite easy once you spent the time going through your parts. And it took several ideas to fix that. So I'll show you what I did. First thing I did was I got a cup of coffee. Actually, I think that was the second thing I did. Anyway, this is the elaborate system. I start, this is how high, you see this? Right here, see, see this little stem here? Let me get a pointer. Okay. This pointer right here. That was where the coupler was mounted. So as you can see, this is the actual height of an actual train. I guess they call that NMRA standard. Well, this is where this one was at. And I don't know what kind of coupler was on there originally because I bought it and there was no coupler. Just a hole there where a coupler used to be. So anyway, I assembled a box, a KD uh, number five complete box. And then I had to come up with a screw and there's plenty of meat on this frame. So I ended up getting this uh, um, distance away from the tender that I wanted. Sorry. And then I drilled a hole, took the die cast shell off here. And I drilled a hole right there. In doing so, I had to relocate a couple of these stanchions, these brass stanchions. They used to be right there in the middle. So I had to bring them out. You know? That was easy enough. But then I had to find a washer, which I happened to have on hand. It was a an aluminum washer, so it looks good. The spaces to even drop it even lower. The box was not enough, so it had to be shimmed down still closer to the track but the end result was good also these trucks these rear trucks the flanges of these trucks right here were getting locked up on two nubs of plastic that were right down in there i simply took my snippers and just snipped them off and now they don't lock up on anything there were a lot of uh, things on this tinder alone by itself that need to be addressed now we're going to move on and i haven't been in that thing yet so that thing being the engine so we'll do it together all right let's start by uh making sure you're in the camera frame here i'm gonna get on my knees here because i need it can you see yeah I'll put you like that maybe now you can see yeah now you can see Start by removing some of this unnecessary stuff here. I'm going to try to... Uh, let me get this off first. I can't uh, talk, unscrew trains, and uh, chew gum all at the same time. These here. I don't know if the diameter is right. But I'm figuring if they're too big, I can squeeze them. A pair of needle nose. I don't know how this is going to work. We'll see. If it works, then hey, hoorah. Let's take this front pilot truck off. What is that? Front pilot? I only have to say is pilot truck. All 
All right. Come on, I want the spring too. Oh, and there's a washer there also. So, uh, where's my tweezers at? I will, uh, we're going to have to grease this thing too, I'm sure. I don't know if this manufacturer greased anything or not. I don't even know where this thing is made. Nowhere on here does it say made in China or any place else. So, who knows? Let me see if I can get a small Phillips here. There's somewhere I know. Maybe that's it. <clears throat> okay. Let's see what we got under this plate. Come on. There's one. Two. So far, they're all the same size. That's a good thing. I don't have to be so anal about. There's the plate. Wow. Plastic nylon. Or is that nylon gears or just white plastic gears? Here, you want to see with me? This is what we're looking at. So, I think we're going to be able to get these guys in here. So the center one is the driven wheel. They did put some grease in there. I see it. Let's see how pliable that grease is right now. Uh, it's a little gluey, but I've seen worse. This is from the late 80s. So, and again, I don't know if it has any runtime. If you look at those wheels, it doesn't look like it. I mean, other than the, the runtime that I put on it myself. But the question is, that's killing me, is how do you separate the chassis from the loco body? I see a screw in there. What does that do? I don't see one there. So, Oh, that, that screw. Careful, Kevin. That screw just may hold the motor in. Then what? Hmm. Dilemmas, dilemmas. And again, I don't want to start messing with this and have all this linkage fall apart. So, what do I do? Really question how centered those drivers are on there. But it looks to me like they are pretty flush. Meaning, meaning what? Meaning that they were pressed. Let me get my pointer again. Meaning they were pressed pretty good on both sides. So they're flush with the wheel itself. So, could be just a... I think I'm going to get away with one of those on each side. If I can do it at all. That one will pull out. They actually did. If you look inside there. Inside that flange right there. Actually did put a washer in there. That's not enough. Can I get all this out? Uh, not with going on. Not without going on a roller coaster ride of emotions. Mm. All right, first things first. Let me see if one of these are going to snap on this axle. If it does, then great. And again, once I get it on down there in the situation, how do I get it snapped on there without bending something? Well, it looks like they're going to be small enough. And it's, it's a balance. Is it small enough and big enough? I don't know. All right. I have the E-clip on that wheel. And I have another one on that side. So let's drop this back down in here. 
I may have to fiddle with it a little bit. Oh, not so bad. Now, there's one on each side, and that has eliminated a lot of play. If you look at this, that's a start. Let's give it a try. I'll finish these up, and uh, I will come back. All right. We're going to go with some of this fancy schmancy stuff. See that? Axle grease. Can you see that? Right there. Good thick stuff. Safe for plastic, thank God, because we got some plastic in there. Our toothpick. Let's see if we can get this loaded up in here really good. Can you guys see? I think you can see. Get this down way down in there. Can I get this out? No? I can get that down in there. Pack it in there. Come on. Fresh in there. Some more of that. And uh, let's put some more down under there, like so. Both sides of those. There we go. What do you think? We think we got it, guys? And gals? Alright, what do you say we put this back together? And uh, before we go putting it all back together, we will put this on some power and check to see if I screwed anything up because before I started it was working I mean as far as power goes and I didn't think about it but I should have put it under power before I started messing with it to see if any of those wheels were bent because they don't seem like very very good wheels. They almost seem like two-piece tin wheels, you know? Tin as in T-I-N. I don't know, though. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But, boy, that's a contortionist job right there. What I just did with that screwdriver, middle finger and thumb. And screw. Alright, so a couple oilers there. I might as well drop a little oiler in here. Oil. I'm using uh, the conductive stuff, so no harm, no foul. Right on that axle there. Right on that axle there. Alright, what do you say we go over to the bench here. I'll take you with me. All right. I got a couple power leads here. Uh, do we have power? We have power. Let me see if I can get something to prop this up. So, I can get some kind of, I don't know how stable that is, but at least I can catch it if it starts to fly. Yeah, so. Got us some power? Yes. Let's have a look at these wheels and see what they do. So we have our tinder. It looks like you got a bent wheel. Let me see if I can get this up here for you. Come on. It looks like... Uh, Looks like they're all bent. You guys seeing what I'm seeing? 
It looks like they're all bent. A lot of the play is gone though. But that back one here looks really bent. This guy. Oh yeah. Wow. Now how do I go about doing that without guessing? Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Guess I could try to see. Even that one looks. This this all looks cattywampus to me. Can I just give it a little finger bend? I mean, if I can, that's pretty scary. I just did. Holy shit, I just bent it with my fingers. More power. That's why it's hopping around the track right there. Hmm. It's more power. Yeah, that's what we want more power. Yeah, that one wheel right there is really alarming. This guy right here. See, now I think I got it where I can bend it out a little bit. Hold on. Let me uh, get something a little more suited for the job, but I'll be gentle. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Doesn't take much, obviously. Oh, that was much better. I mean, it's not perfect, but... Um, this front one here looks like it's jumping around a little bit, too. Right here. Wait. Better not do that, because I ended up squeezing the other wheel in. Alright, I think uh, I'll just give this a little bit of a twist, just a little, I don't know, I mean really, are these wheels bending under the weight of the Loco? The Loco's all die cast, the, are, the, are the wheels the Achilles heel? That one seems much straighter. Um, I say we put it back together, and we take it upstairs and put it on a track. See you upstairs. Okay, guys, I took all those cars off. Remember those when we started? And it was just sitting and spinning? 
Well, now I'm down to only three freight cars. And I took out these, took off these two heavy, these are heavy die cast cars. So, uh, we're gonna give it another chance with just three plastic freight cars. Look at it, still spinning. Okay, there it goes. Well, I'll call that a fail. I'm not going to say it's a fail on my part for trying. I say it's a fail in the entire design. You know, you sit there and you put a motor in something. You know, and you say, oh, by the way, fully functional. Again, I don't know what the stipulations uh, were on this from Franklin Mint when they sold it. But uh, obviously they were selling you the idea of a fine cast. It's not that fine. I mean, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's a nice casting. It's got some nice brass on there. But they're really, uh, they were dazzling us with shiny things. You know? Again, I bought this second hand. But there you go. There's the shiny things they're dazzling you with. Overall, you know, from, from a few feet away, that Hudson looks fantastic. But as you can see in the video, no pulling power. And those wheels are all hopping all around. I suppose, you know, with a little work, you could you could do something with it. But there's just too many engines out there that, uh, you know, I don't know. A lot of die cast. A lot of die cast for a manufacturer to throw what feels to me like hollowed wheels. They almost seem like they are tin pressed wheels. Like there's a centerpiece and this... This wheel feels hollow. You saw how they bend on the axles. If you just squeeze them, you can actually pinch those together. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Has no pulling power. Maybe if they would have designed it with a traction tire and paid that extra penny and a half for traction tire, it probably would have pulled a few extra cars. But that's not something you can enjoy. You know? So, yeah, my final thoughts are... Unless you really like to tinker with stuff, you know, stay away from the Franklin Mint HO precision models, Hudson, or anything else, you know, because uh, you'll only be let down. Hey, thanks for watching my videos. How about?